all. So are you ready to be informative and valuable to the, the viewers? <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully. Hi, I'm Dirty Shed Creations. I don't know who this guy is. Should we, shall I remember that one? <laughs> yeah, it's all recording. We, uh, so, shall I just have a quick... I'm Dirty Shed Creations. <laughs> I don't know who this is. Some guy. <laughs> we always like to add an element of drinky poops. Oh, nice one. Yeah. Camera. Uh, oi. So what have we done this she morning? She actually likes a bit of booze. Well, we've uh, we just finished our Skull Coaster film that hopefully you've all seen, liked, subscribed, commented on. Um, as as part of the Schedulencia, those that have been enlightened by the Shed, uh, of course you will have done all those things and forwarded it to each and every one of your contacts in your contact list. They will have then done the same thing and now we're even too big to really continue. Yeah. Q&A's, fuck. <laughs> Shall we just say, Scott Turner? Well, thank you so much, Scott. I mean, Scott gave us a big shout out. Um, he made this absolutely stunning rustic clock, I think he called it, didn't he? This build's going to be a clock, very large clock, about 600 millimeters in diameter. A few months ago, my good friends at Dirty Shed Creations over in the UK sent me, or made me, and sent me these bow ties. I love his, I've got to be honest, and you know, he is one of my favourite YouTubers, actually. I love, I love his films, I love what he makes. Um, that clock, to me, we think we're going to try and do our own twist on it. Um, he balls up a couple of times, didn't he? And that crash he had with the CNC, oh, that took me right back to my machining yeah. days. You know, I was like, oh, when you just saw it, and <laughs> It was all quite, all the timbers were lined up so kind of vertically, say, or, um, and I did like the element of that piece of timber going in kind of um, horizontally. So I think it actually added to it in the end. And I love those bits of rot and those holes that were drilled through the timber. It all kind of came together really nicely in the end. Thank you so much, Scott. Mm. So, are you going to talk about the lights then? Because Scott but Turner used the butterfly ties that you used on the lamp, which yeah. lives just over there. Yeah, it's um, kind of just here. And we went to a car boot and you picked up some more lamps and you seem to have got a few yeah, more. Yeah, we've and... got a few bits here. So, I mean, so we went to an auction and essentially um, we picked up a couple of miners' lamps here. Um, I like to buy these when they are complete. Uh, and these are complete. Um, they're beautiful things. There's there's videos on YouTube about them. I don't like it when someone's polished the living hell out of them. So we've got kind of what I imagine there if we can. I don't really... I like to do projects that wouldn't interfere with this and we wouldn't like drill a hole straight into the kind of, you know, the fabric of this lamp. We'll maybe try and route cables a different way and see what we can do. Or indeed they might just end up... We might just make a hook for them to sit on. But we've got those to kind of play with. Um... I think these ones actually were probably actually used, just judging by the condition they're in. Um, so you're going to do a pair that match for those? Yeah, well that's, you know, it is an idea, but like I say, we'll, we'll be dictated to by how and if we can get a light into there without damaging them. I like them as they are, actually. You know, it might end up, I don't know, we'll see, but there's probably a project. Now this one is older. This is like a battery operated one. I think those ones are paraffin. So this is quite a bit older, this one. Um, it's got its lovely identification tag. This had a battery in it. So you can imagine how big the battery is. And I think these date from like the 30s. So this one will be a project. What we'll probably do is we'll end up doing a little bit of kind of micro, not microelectronics. We'll do some wiring in here. Um, and we'll we'll stick a little LED bulb in there. So that is going to be a project. Um, and the reason we can do that is that we can get in there without kind of having to drill and, and ruin what it is as an object in its own right. So yeah, that's going to be a... Um, Similar in a... style to the, the block? Or yeah. have you got any other concepts that you're mucking about with at the moment? What do you uh, think? I don't know. I mean, I think we're probably going to return to that kind of idea. Yeah. Um, but it'll be on a... 
maybe on a bigger scale and maybe a little bit more more elements of blacksmithing going into it, maybe making like a articulated arm. These are all just, you know, let's not hold ourselves to this. We do this a lot. Yeah. Well, yeah, so there's another, that's that's another lamp we um, picked up. That one was auction. In fact, all of those were auction. I didn't pay a great deal for them. I think I paid probably no more than about 40, what would equate to about 50 or 60 bucks Yeah. Uh, for those in uh, American money. Yeah. yeah. Hold yeah. them up then. So that's the big boy. This is like the old battery operated one. It's got his ID on it. There is like a little, where is it? Just here. This has got a war. You know, we've just discussed that war department glyph. And this has got one on it here. Can you just see just there? Can you just see the, the broad arrow mark? 309. And then here's a maker's mark. I think this is called a CEAG 4 volt type. So it's a battery operated miner's lamp. 1930. And then we've got these boys over here. Yeah, those a ones. Closer one. Looking at that. Um, they're a type. I don't know what type because all the markings have been, but I think they're actually kind of proper, like, if, would you call them as issued or something like that? These have, uh, these cool. were probably actually down some mine somewhere. They're beautifully made. They're such nice things. We've also got um, a couple of other little items. I really like this at a car boot sale that we bought. Um, six quid, look at that. I think I even haggled him down to a fiver, so that's like ten bucks worth. This is like cast iron or steel. So that will probably, that, I don't know. We'll see, but I just love all the thumb screws on it. I'm not too fond of the blue colour, but can maybe... Can you take that back off and back? Yeah, we can do. We'll do something with that, but it's intact and it's working. So, yeah, so that was a fiver. 1930s, like, utilitarian lamp. I just... You know, just love the shape of it and the big glass dome. And, of course, the glass is undamaged, so... Yeah. Um, and then uh, what else have we got? There's this bulkhead light. Again, it's really heavy, you know. I think this was, like, four quid or something. So what's that, like, six or seven dollars? Yeah, um, not even. Metal, unchipped glass. Is it, like, 1930s heavy industrial? That'll probably end up going on the workshop, to be honest, just as a light with some sort of probably bright LED light in it. Yeah. Um, there's that. Um, something that we will, something that I've kind of realized is we've got these beautiful dials that again, I picked up kind of two of these. One of these is like a automotive amp meter um, from like probably again the 1930s. That's got a painted dial, this one. Um, Shut camera. Sorry, there you go. There you go. Um, so that's beautiful. So that would be nice to incorporate into a lamp. Be nice to incorporate, co Incorporate. It would be nice to incorporate that into a lamp and actually have it kind of functioning, you know, when you turned it on and it sat there kind of reading the milliamp. So I think we can actually do that. Um, this one again, that'll probably end up in a... Uh, What's that from then? This is like a, an automotive engineer's um, kind of voltmeter or amp meter from back in the day. You've got all these settings on here. It's really quite something. I paid next to nothing for them. I think I paid four quid for the pair. So they're like 19, I mean, you know, I've been inside this one. It's missing a nameplate there, which is a shame, but they're just kind of quite interesting little bits and pieces, aren't they? You know, this is like you would add your test leads coming off here. You've got your four settings for whatever you're reading. Um, yeah, cool. Because of how it measures no more than half an amp. So I think these were used in like automotive and in an automotive environment. Um, and also judging by the kind of state of the dials and the kind of grease, I've given it a bit of a clean, but um, it's kind of a dead giveaway that it was probably in someone's garage or some, you know, mechanic was using it. So, yeah, it'd be nice to incorporate those into a light and actually have them working, taking yeah. a reading. So that can be done. So, so, yeah, the lamp was a big hit. So we're going to follow yeah. that up with another lamp project. Well, they Get you thinking cap on. Yeah, no, I, I am doing. I'm, um, yeah, it would be nice because they're utilitarian as well. You know, it's something that actually people kind of... You know, it's not, it's, it's, it's a, a, something you interact with, you know, something that's useful. And that's, we kind of, that fits with our kind of credos. Credence? Credence. Credos. What? <laughs> what am I trying to say? Street cred. Right? No, it maps with our... Credibility. No, uh, our kind of uh, way of thinking about things. Credos. Ethos. Ethos. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Crethos, <laughs> ah, just making up words. Yeah, I'm now. just making them up. Um, yeah, no, it, me it meets it meets with our eth ethos ethos really nicely. Yeah. Wow, that word was a penis. <laughs> That's a mashup word meaning pain in the anus. <laughs> Keep that in. Penis. Yeah. yeah. 
Ah, Slurpees. I like their new album. I'm currently working on another film that we worked on together. Oh, right. Which one's that? Uh, the Stag Antler Chandelier. Oh, God. Oh, my word, yeah. That's going to be a good film, that one. Really? Yeah, I think oh, that's going to be, be all right. It's going to be sort of in the mould of the Lamp film. Yeah. It's going to be a juicy one. It's going to be quite a lot of content, but it's going to show you all the processes that Al went through to create a Stag Antler Chandelier. Yeah. Which was again another commission, but I mean the detail in that is sort of really unique because you didn't even research how to do it, did you? You just sort well, of we went, just had an idea. I'm just going to do it this way, which yeah, is cool. And it so works. it is, yeah. So and it did work really well. So yeah. keep an eye out for the stag antler one. Are you ready for some really schedulent activity? Are you one of the schedulensia? Well, come along. Let's see what we're going to make today. Yeah, yeah. The schedulensia. Yeah, those are people who've been enlightened by the shed. The schedulensia. <laughs> Are we spelling that? Uh, S H E D U L E N C E A. All oh, right. Yeah. Nice. It's another probably another mashup word. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. Right, like should we do penis. some... <laughs> penis. <laughs> yeah, and swans. <laughs> We've got uh, a new set of followers called Rich and SJ. Rich and SJ. Yeah, and they yeah. came to us via Scott Turner, and oh, okay. they asked a question. Ooh. Could you... You... Hello. Run through how you made your forge? Rich and SJ. Well, Rich and SJ, um, thanks for asking. I did my research on YouTube. There's 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 probably hundreds of films out there. I can't tell you how many I went through. And you know what? It was easy. I've been called a tool whore before in my time, which is quite a rude way of putting it. But, um, you know, and you, you see these gleaming forges, but, you know, they're about a thousand quid, like for something decent. And it's just like, man, they are. No, there is not a thousand quids worth of work in one and making one of those. I think I made that in like two days in the workshop and they weren't two long days. You've yeah. got to have an idea and you've got to have some stock in, but, oh, it was a piece of piss. The next time we're going to go a lot further than we have done, we'll probably line it with bricks because the bricks will, the bricks will hold the heat more and it'll be a bit chunkier and it'll be a bit bigger and we'll probably put two burners on it. So basically what you do is you blow air as well as propane into it and it, it allows you to kind of tweak the flame so you get it burning more efficiently. You know, um, simple, quick answer, get yourself on YouTube, type in Making a Forge. Yeah, there's, there's I'll loads. stick a few links to, to the films that I've watched that I thought were well made and seem to go through the, the motions yeah. fairly... Uh, well, even for a, a non-DIY blacksmith woodworker as myself. Mm -hmm. Thanks oh. for the question. 
We've got some more. I'm just okay. going to check the bloody thing's still recording. Okay, God, can you imagine? It's still recording, gay! Mm. If there's something that you'd like us to talk about or discuss or make or whatever, leave comments. Yes, yeah. yeah, please comment. Drop us a line. Come and follow us on all our other platforms, yeah, Instagram, absolutely. TikTok. Come and, yeah, say hello. Yeah. We cool. don't bite. No. Sometimes. Only for money. Yeah. Didn't you get recognised in the street the other day? No, I was I was driving to price up a job. And uh, it was really quite weird. I was driving to price up a job in one of the villages around here. And uh, basically I pulled up and this, this guy was outside his house. And I don't know what he was doing, but I was just, oh, you know, afternoon. Um, you couldn't tell me where so-and-so was. And he was like, Dirty Shed Creations, yeah! And it was like... <laughs> and I didn't really know. And then there was a car behind me, so I had to drive off. And then I was like, oh, that's really rude. So I had to turn back around and then come past him and basically just kind of say, oh, you know, thanks very much for the support. You know, it was, it was weird. It was weird. You're like a celebrity. Yeah, a bad one. <laughs> a Weinstein. <laughs> <laughs> Christ, don't leave that in. But, you know, a stable genius, I like to think. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A stable genius. A stable yeah. genius, Alistair Watson. Yeah. Uh, Vote Watson. Yeah. yeah, oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, anyway. So, we'll be back soon. Yeah, Thanks very with. much for watching. Thanks for your patience. More words out of this thing? Uh, we're Dirty Shed Creations. Well, at least I am. <laughs> don't be a painus. Yeah, don't be a painus. Subscribe. Oh, God. With your anus? <laughs> Shit. Don't do that. Don't do no, that. That'd be your mucky. Smudgies. <laughs> okay. So, join us on the... Join us on the flip side, Holmeses. <laughs> oh, dear. Is that racist? And then I'll put some gangster rap in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, bye. Bye. Coming down like precipitation. I ain't never met a limitation. Hate applying my elimination. Gotta go to Google for the information. I'm a superstar, so I gotta shine. Top dollar be the bottom line. Bottom feeding Nick. Get some more booze. <laughs> oh. Oof. Got that one there.